Catch them if you can. Today we're going to be having a look at the DC Collectibles, DC Essentials. This is figure number three, The Flash. The fastest man alive speeds into the fight in this 6.97 inch DC Essentials The Flash action figure that features an impressive 21 points of articulation. Now, I know the packaging touts this as being just around seven inches. I just want to double check this for myself. Put it right to the very top of his head. There we go. The figure is, in fact, 6.9 inches in height, which translates to centimeters as 17.6. And how does Flash stack up with, say, some of the other heroes that we looked at? This is the recently looked at Superman which I have the worst time getting him to properly stand. It's these ankles. I am not crazy. Loving this line, not loving the ankles though on these figures. I don't even know if I'm gonna get Superman to properly stand. All right, so far so good. And there he is next to Batman, a little bit easier to stand. The only one omitted from this, we haven't looked at Deathstroke yet. Reverse Flash is somewhere. He's sped off, he's probably in packed away somewhere. I'm going to have to see if I can find them. But in the meantime, these are three of the DC Essentials figures. Essentially, see what I did there. Essentially, you can see that they are making use of similar body molds. In fact, one could easily say as well that Flash is using also the same hands and body as Superman. Looking at the Scarlet Speedster, sadly, he doesn't come with any accessories. This seems to be an ongoing trend when it comes to the DC Essentials line. For this being the, quote, essentials, they really essentially have nothing in the way of accessories. A display base is the only thing I certainly would have asked for when it comes to figures like this, because again, I'm having real problems when it comes to this peg point, this little ankle hinge that they've got on all these figures. I have the toughest time to get them to stand. I would have loved some peg holes on the undersides of their feet. At the very least, you could attach them to any display base. Even if you didn't have a display base included with the figures, if you came at least with holes underneath their feet, I could easily find a display base to support them with. So getting them to stand is not the easiest thing to do. You might find myself just, you might see me just doing this from time to time, just sort of bending the ankles as best as I can get it, just to get the figure to stand properly. So. I will say this is one of the big ongoing problems I'm starting to have with this figure line. The Batman wasn't so bad, and I guess mileage may vary. Batman's ankles, for the most part, is pretty good. Superman's, though, are disastrous. Uh, just really loose, non-supporting sort of legs. I mean, these pegs, they really have to go with them. Just a regular hinge, I think I would have accepted much more, or a ball joint, but this the pegs these sort of hinges just I don't find support the figures well enough and it means that a lot of times when trying to stand these figures the figures just topple over Superman being so far the worst one I've got from the lot yeah he just doesn't stand very well at all we've already had a look at him so we can put him aside we've of course already had a look at Batman we could put him aside as well and let's have a look at Flash now I do really like his face his face sculpt is quite good one of the on things, the ongoings, here I am talking about ongoing things as well. One thing I am noticing though is that they always seem to have profound chins, very squared off chins. I noticed this with Batman. I also noticed this with Superman. There's Batman just for an example here. They have these forward squared off chins. You see how they stick forward as opposed to sticking further down? Flash doesn't have as much of that as, say, Batman does. But when we have a look, say, at Aquaman, you'll see what I'm talking about right there. Face sculpt is good, though. I am happy with how Flash's head sculpt was sculpted. And luckily, these little side fins, these lightning bolts on the sides of his mask, haven't been damaged. Knock on wood. But again, I do like the face sculpt. Paint is nice and clean. The eyes are very sharply detailed. Choice of red also is a nice touch. 
this particular red as best as I can describe is is almost like a very orangey red. Ketchup could be a good color you could use to describe this. Ketchup red. He's got a very cleanly printed emblem there on the front of his chest. Clean for the most part. There are a few little hiccups, as it could best go with most figures that you pick up. There's always those little hiccups. This little hiccup happens to be the little lightning bolt on the side of his belt. That's a little on the messy side. Other than that, it's pretty clean. The lightning bolts around his arms, at least. And of course, he does have his feet. The pegs, you can tell, were used as yellow plastic, whereas the feet, the boots, that is, were painted yellow. This may cause some separation in color because the little hinges here are clearly a different yellow than the rest of the yellow in his boots. I'm going to assume that the prim primary plastic used for this was red, so there's not really any issues that I have with the red plastic. It's pretty clean, like I said, because it's just been cast in red plastic and then they just have painted stuff over top of it. I like the head sculpt, though. I think the head sculpt is... Definitely one of the better Flash figures out there. It's just such a shame that it has to come with a figure that's got these problematic issues with his ankles. Talk about that probably more and more as we have a look at these DC Essential figures. Posability on this guy. Now his head rotates all the way around. It also hinges up. You can get it to about there, which would be fun if you wanted to pose him. But unfortunately... Again, like you can't, there's nothing supporting this figure. Unless I get one of those bases that have the little clips and I can clip it to his ankle, there's no way I'm going to get Flash into a running pose. It just isn't going to happen. So a lot of times, much like all the other essential figures so far, I'm essentially just going to have to have them standing straight. And I really don't like that. The arms hinge out and uh, they also rotate all the way around. He has a swiveling point on the bicep, a uh, double hinge on the elbow, although it's not the most effective double hinged elbow because the bicep is so big that it's hard to get a secondary bend happening in the elbow. A lot of times it just, this is to the extent of what it seems to be able to do. The hands rotate all the way around as well and hinge back and forth. Let me just get my hands out of the way. I got hands everywhere here. Uh, the upper torso does have a crunch, although I do notice on Flash here, it's really stiff. It's there, but I just can't bend it on my particular figure. He has a waist swivel, legs split out, split out. He has a top swivel cut on the thigh there, three-quarter cut right at the top there. Double hinge on the knee, which works much, much better than that of the elbows. He has a swivel on the boot, and then we get to the portion of the ankle, which I dislike this ankle. This is something that really, as a newer figure, an older figure, sure, I could dismiss this as, well, it's just back in the day, they didn't know any bit better. But this is one of those ankles that it hinges this way, but you can't hinge the foot this way unless the hinge is rotated this way, if that makes any sense. And then you can hinge it. Why oh why they chose this sort of hinge? Because of all the joints of all the joints a figure can possibly have, these just, they're almost like just capped hinges. So essentially what it is is there's a half, there's a half, they plug together, and then they rotate like this. The problem comes with that, though, is that the hinge becomes one of the loosest hinges that you can get on a figure. And they put it on something like an ankle, where it's going to support all of the figure. Over time, and this is a figure that I just recently got out of packaging, over time this is going to become excessively loose. Flash stands fine now, but I don't think he's going to stand well on his own without the use of a display stand in probably months from now. And that's a real shame. With only four figures into the DC Essentials lineup so far, my thoughts remain still relatively new. I will say, though, based on the figures that I've looked at so far, that the sculpts are really nice. Some of the best versions, some of the best incarnations of the classic, iconic characters of the DC Universe. The Batman is really good. The Superman is really good. Reverse Flash still probably remains one of my favorite, and I really like this Flash. This could probably be one of the best Flash figures that have been released. 
Unfortunately, the trade-off for this is with this being a new line, you really want the line to do well and you don't want the figures to have any problems. And I'm already seeing a lot of consistent problems with one part on this figure. And that's the ankles. The ankles, they made use of a standard swiveling peg, which I find does not work to support figures. I've had figures of enough over the time, over the years, to know that that sort of swivel lends itself to getting really loose real fast. And of all the places that they put a swiveling peg like that, they put it in a place that needs to support the weight of the figure. It doesn't really make much sense. You could justify that at least if the figure had peg holes on the undersides of his feet, that any loose pegs and ankles could have been compensated by having the figure be supported by a display stand. Well, they don't have peg holes on the undersides of their feet as well. So the longevity of this line is something that is definitely in question, at least in my mind. Looking at the figure, I adore the designs of these characters. I just worry, though, that these figures are not going to be able to stand months from now after picking up the figures. Oh, it's so sad because I really like this Flash. I don't really like the fact that I have to stand him straight up or if I bend him anywhere in the knee area, his ankles are going to be loose and the figure may topple over. Superman's doing this already and I just picked up the figure. That makes me so sad. If you are interested in picking this figure up for yourself, you can currently find it at your local comic book store. If you did pick up this figure, let me know down below if you're experiencing the same problems with the ankles of your figures as I've had problems with my figures. I'm sure it's not a case where I'm the only one that's experienced this. It's probably happened across the board to everybody as well. I think as a little side footnote for DC Collectibles, continue this line. This line has some stable footing, if you will, and it's ironic that I would say that, but fix the footing of your figures. Those hinges are not going to cut it with a line that you want to have for a very long time. Either way, today we were having a look at the DC Collectibles DC Essentials. This was figure number three, The Flash. Looking forward to getting the rest of these opened up and reviewed. I just hope that the ankles will get a little bit better or be a little tighter at least on the other figures that I'm going to be opening up, but stay tuned. Those videos are going to be coming your way. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button that's just below this video, and while you're at it, why not swing by the homepage and check out the videos section. It's your best way to guarantee that any new videos that I've posted up to this point and beyond will be all on the videos section on my playlist, on the playlist and also on the homepage. So check those out if you get a chance. More videos, guys, will be coming your way, so certainly stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.